Vapor wrapper, yes. <laughs> Trinity Girl Natural. Today we're talking about Vicks Vapor Rub, the stuff that you grew up putting on your chest and stuff when you had the cool naturals and all putting it in their hair. So I'm here with the should you or shouldn't you. And let's get right into it, shall we? <laughs> I'm gonna start by doing what everybody else should start by doing, which is checking the ingredients, and then we can go from there. The ingredients of the Vicks Vapor Rub is kind of surprising, I think probably because it's one of the well, actually not probably, it's definitely because it's a really old product before they learn about putting a lot of crap and stuff. So the ingredients are actually pretty good, minus the petroleum. So the active ingredients are camphor, eucalyptus oil, and menthol. And as they do on your chest, they're all pretty much meant to stimulate. They're also like cough suppressants and stuff, but essentially they're stimulants. So I could see them stimulating the scalp. The inactive ingredients are also pretty good, minus the petroleum. So there's petroleum, and then there's cedarwood oil, nutmeg oil, and turpentine oil. So those are all, again, things that just help to stimulate the scalp. A few of them are also antibacterial or antifungal, so the eucalyptus oil, for example, is antibacterial. The nutmeg oil is anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. The thymol, which I think is actually derived from thyme, is antifungal and antibacterial. And the turpentine oil is an antioxidant oil, so stimulates the scalp. So those are all great. And if it wasn't a formulation that didn't contain petroleum, I would have been like, hey, go for it. I did a video on how to do a scalp massage, and I mentioned there that you definitely don't want to put petroleum on your scalp. I'm not team petroleum, because it's a sealant and it can really clog your follicles. So I know if you shampoo really well, most likely you'll get rid of it if you shampoo regularly. I know some people shampoo less regularly. So if you shampoo regularly with a strong shampoo, you may be okay using petroleum on your scalp, but generally I'd avoid it. There isn't really a need to do it. You can use a carrier oil like castor oil and put all your essential oils into it. But if you already use grease and you're happy with your life and you wanna use Vicks, I would actually say go for it because it's just grease plus some good stuff. If you don't use petroleum, well obviously you don't have any business putting Vicks on your scalp. <laughs> so then I would say get some tea tree oil and some peppermint oil and some castor oil or even avocado oil for your carrier oil and use that instead to stimulate your scalp. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration. Take a look at this. So this is the texture of... of I want to say grease, but the fix. So you can see it's pretty thick. It does do good things for a stuffy nose, but this is the texture of it like on your hands. So this is not going to be rubbing in. This is going to leave a film on you. Like, you know, you can see it. So this is a sealant. This is petroleum. This is grease. So if that's what you want to do to your scalp, go ahead. But I'm just letting you know that this is what you're doing to your scalp. <laughs> This is your scalp on Vix. <laughs> and this is my oil mix. It's like olive, avocado, and castor. So it's still pretty heavy. Put some right there. So you can see. And this is your hand, your hand on oil. So, you know? So as you can see that that oil gets in there, whereas this grease is still a problem, <laughs> this grease is still present. I can still feel it, it's not going nowhere, no matter what I do, I'm going to need some soap to get this out. So that was my demonstration. <laughs> An oil versus fix, aka grease with some good stuff, and what it would look like to your scalp. If all you're looking to do is stimulate your scalp, you can just get some peppermint oil for regular use. If you want to do like an antibacterial treatment, tea tree oil is like a marvelous oil for just scalp issues and periodic use to deal with scalp issues. And you can just get like a little bottle of pure tea tree or peppermint oil and it will last you a really long time. So you don't have to live the Vicks life if that's not what you want to do. There are options. There are alternatives. 
whether you're using Vicks or oil or even nothing, like sebum girls like myself, you don't have to put a lot of product to massage your scalp. So I definitely recommend this is a case where you would go mild on it. You don't just want to slap it on your scalp like two inches thick. Just put a little bit on your fingertips and then massage your scalp. So I won't go into too much detail about it because I have a full video on scalp massaging. So definitely check that out. But I would say whether you're using oil or whether you're using grease or Vicks, you don't have to put a lot. Just a little bit on your fingertips. The stimulation will get there from your fingertips. And less is more because the less gunk, especially petroleum, but even oil that you put on your scalp, the more sebum your scalp can create because your scalp stops producing sebum until your scalp is clean. So when you put stuff on it, it's like, oh, okay, you don't need me no more, I'm out. That's what your sebum says. And sebum is, of course, the best oil for your hair because it does also have an acid mantle, so it does also protect your cuticles. And just to stress that the most important thing is actually retaining your length and taking care of what you do have. Because there are a lot of people looking for growth treatments and growth magic but they're not taking care of what they do have and I think that is definitely step one. Until you're retaining length, it doesn't even make sense to go looking for growth tricks or growth magic, you know? And it can really lead you astray because there are people telling you all sorts of things and doing all sorts of things. So if you're just like, oh, what's the latest growth thing? Oh, let me put this in my hair, let me put that in your hair. It can be risky. Let's put it that way, it can be risky. So slow and steady, good regimen, retain your length, and it'll happen, like there's no rush. I think that was the first thing I had to learn when I went natural is that there's no rush. It will happen, it will grow. Because yeah, you want it to grow now, but it grows slowly. Slowly, but it does grow. So, yeah. So I hope this was informative and I hope it kind of shed some light on the entire topic. If you're curious about it, if you want to use it, now you know. So let me know what you thought in the comments and let me know if you're team Vix, I guess. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> but let me know if you use Vicks on your scalp or not, or if you use anything on your scalp. What do you use? How do you use it? And what's your philosophy when it comes to hair length, hair growth, hair life? <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.